Hello, welcome to Mix Training. This is Better Mix, and today we're gonna see Renderman displacements. Alright, so to render displacements in Renderman, it's gonna be really cool and fast, but there are some gotchas that you need to know. So we're gonna go, you can see I have an example here, we're gonna go from this, which is totally the base mesh, to this beautiful rock render uh, just with displacement here to show the actual effect. Uh, so let's go and see how this is done. It's gonna be, as I said, simple. So I have here the setup, have this asset there, which is from the Megascans library. If you uh, have access to the Megascans library, there's uh, a lot of uh, the models there that you can use, or even if you don't, there's a few ones uh, that are free that you can use to, to do this. So I'm gonna load a new uh, instance of this model to start from scratch. And it's gonna be in my project in geometry. It's gonna be this one, and I'm gonna load the biggest uh, LOD I have here. All right, so there we go. We have a new instance of this rock and I'm going to call this tutorial to it just for tutorial. And I made this uh, smaller because by default, it's pretty huge. You can see it's pretty huge in the scene. So I made this a little bit smaller. Let's see uh, 0 0.1. So I'm going to hide the uh, one that I already had there and I have the mesh there. Right. You can see the mesh is pretty, um, pretty course it's really base basic so let me just hide the background there and let's just see this how it looks you can see this is pretty basic mesh it's not that uh, high res uh, and let's see how many polygons we have we have 19 uh, 900 9000 polygons around that which is I mean points 19,000 uh, primitives which is all right uh, yep 19,000 uh, primitives. All right, so we need uh, a few things for this. So again, you know, guys, if you didn't uh, haven't seen my intro to Renderman, you go and see that. But you need uh, the IRIS uh, rub to render, of course, and then you're gonna need a surface uh, for this. Let me create another one. Another one. Uh, but I already have the RIS file here, so I'm not gonna create that. So now, if we go to the shop, we should have. Uh, to the shop we should have the risnet and inside we should have some uh, materials I already have a few materials here uh, this is the one that we just created uh, but I'm not gonna actually use this one it's gonna be just the shading and if you go and see through this I want to show you this in even I'm gonna even if I'm not gonna use it I'm gonna show you that there's no actually uh, normals here uh, I mean displacement to connect anywhere here so I think in the pixel surface, let's do bring the pixel surface. So this is the pixel surface. And again, ah, this is the same thing. Pixel layer I wanted to, to get. Pixel layer. So pixel layer, again, there's no uh, inputs for displacements anywhere here. So what you want to do is uh, we're not going to use that. I'm not going to use that. So what we're going to do is actually create a displacement shader uh, and use this one that says new. Use that one. Don't use the old one. Use the new one. So this is the one that we're going to apply to the object. And that's an, that's the first gotcha there. So you need to create a displacement node to apply the displacement, not in the actual shader. This is going to be just for color, specular, all that stuff. But for displacement, it's going to be a new separate chair uh, specifically for displacement. So now we're going to need a texture file to load our texture for sure. And then we're going to get just the, uh, since the uh, displacement needs a scalar value, we're just going to get the red value for there. That's the one. Now we need to load the texture. And again, this needs to be converted to a text file like I got here. You can see this is text. And my displacement, I have a NeXR version, but the one I'm going to use is the text file, text version. So again, if you don't know how to do that, see my introduction to, to, uh, render map, please. So we're going to use the text displacement here. And now we loaded that. We loaded the, the red channel to displacement and we are having a, a bunch of amount, a big amount of displacement here. Let me put it 
down because I already know it's going to be too much. So point two, it's uh, all right. But all right. So now in the asset here, where do we plug this? There's a material now, but uh, that's supposed to be for materials. So yeah, that's the second gacha. You need to uh, add the material, the property to connect the displacement. So let's go here again. I did that too fast. Uh, this cog edit um, rendering parameters. Uh, go to the section here and uh, type this place, this place, like that. So you're going to see there's a few displacement parameters here for uh, RenderMart 21. And there is the displacement shader. We need that one. And we also need the displacement bound. So just control select both and add them here. But I'm not going to click this because it's going to put them somewhere else. Just want them here uh, on beneath my material parameter so apply and accept now i have these two guys here these are the two ones that i just added but now uh there's another gacha here so if you click here you can see there you see nothing here so it's weird that you see nothing there so that parameter uh, might be wrong so let's go to edit parameters and uh select this guy here the displacement shader and change this op filter here to any operator so let's apply and accept. That might be something that we might need to tell the renderman guys to change. Now you can uh, browse and, and find your displacement uh, texture here. And uh, I think it's this one that one I made. Of course, uh, that should be, I should be uh, naming this rock tooth. And you can see that's the one that we are using there. Uh, displacement bound, you never wanted to leave it at, at zero. So let's start with one. And uh, one, it's uh, a good approximation. Don't don't make it too high because it will take a, a lot of time to uh, render. So now with that, we can go here to the uh, render uh, and we can start rendering. Let's see what we have. We have, uh, I have it here and it's rendering. And you can see And you can see we have a render here, uh, but it's a little bit too blobby. Looks uh, really bad, like like it's made of out of marshmallows or something. So we need to fix that. That's our first uh, issue here. So if you uh, know, in this case, uh, the uh, the displacement is made of uh, like the you can see the gray here is the zero value, and the black values are are displacement that are going into the surface and the ones that are, are wider are displacements that are going to be out of the surface so we need to uh, balance this because right now it's it's thinking that uh, the black values are zero and everyone everything else it's just going out so that's why it seems uh, so marshmallowy thingy uh, not all displacements are made like this but if you have displacement like this that come from a uh, zbrush especially or or Modbox, some of them most of the time co come like that. So what we need to do here is uh, put a, um, put a, one of these remaps, put a pixel remap. So let's plug it here. We need to plug now the uh, RGB here to the input. Uh, and we need to uh, plug the result R to the display scalar. scalar. Now here is going to be a few gachas here. So we want the input range to come from minus one. As, uh, as we said, we have a uh, values negative and, and positive. So we kind of put in the zero value in the middle there. And here we're gonna, we're not gonna touch this uh, right now. Let's uh, go for that. And the output, we also want the output to be uh, from minus one to one. So let's see what that gives us right now. All right, so it seems like nothing changed. Uh, but what we need to do now, let's go to the, let's go to, again to the, uh, let me put, leave this right here, I guess. Uh, and let's go to this guy. And uh, we need to remap this bias uh, by half of this gain. So let me just do this uh, really quickly here, point uh, 25 here. And let's render this uh, guy again. All right, so now look at that. That looks uh, way better. We got uh, our displacement the way we want. It's not looking uh, marshmallowy like before, like this. So we have uh, our displacement. Are we done? 
Not really. And this is the, another gacha here that you have these areas that are flat. You can see we are missing information there. So what's happening there is that it's clamping the values for the, uh, for the, uh, map that we're inputting. So what we need to do is here, go to the remap in this input range, uncheck this clamp and uncheck this output. We don't want to clamp the values uh, anyway here. So let's go render again. All right. So now look at that. The display, we have displacement everywhere. You can see here the difference. If I get closer, you can see we have areas without info and that was the clamping that was happening. So we don't want to clamp that. You can see now we have a uh, really beautiful displacements everywhere in the inner rock. If we see the one that it's here, this is the base and this one, you can see it's not being inflated. It's just adding the, the displacement on top. Of course, the displacement might be a little too high. So in my, uh, Example, I just did zero one here in the, uh, in this node that the pixel, pixel displays, uh, put the game to zero one and rendered this for a final time. All right. So now you can see these rocks looking pretty good. You can see this was a little bit too much displacement and, uh, comparing with the original, which is this one, you can see. It's not gaining any volume. It's just displacing the geometry, which is exactly what we want. It looks pretty cool. Now, another thing is if you are lacking detail in your uh, surface, in this rock, we have a lot of detail. But if you are lacking detail, uh, one thing you can do is go to the RAS and go to the uh, section here for me. Finally, as I always uh, here in the, in the dicing category on well, this dicing tab. You can increase, I mean, actually decrease the micro polygon length, and that's going to be kind of the, the, the size of the micro polygon. So if you make it smaller, it's going to be, uh, more quality for the, uh, for the, no, for the, uh, pixels here. And it's going to be the display is going to be, a have a little bit more detail. So let's render one with the, the micro polygons length at, at half. So it's going to be twice the detail there. All right, so now you can see I rendered that and uh, a different, uh, just by looking at that, it doesn't look like it has too much, uh, too much happened by, but if we get closer, let's get closer to this area. You can see this is the previous one and this is the new one. You can see there's a lot more shading and it, the details can, it's getting sharper everywhere. You can see here, you can see the detail gets sharper and all those edges get a little bit sharper. So if you're lacking detail in your displacement, might be that you need to add a little bit, uh, lower the micro polygon length. And just to finish, we are gonna, I'm going to tell you why, what this uh, displacement bound thingy does. So if you put this really low, let's say 0 0.01 is going to be really low. And you might have seen this error before. Let me render this. All right. So there's no issues there. Might, might be some issues here. Let me put it lower. Zero point. Let me put it to zero. Let's see if that uh, makes it fail. Okay. Well, for starters, uh, I didn't render the displacement. So let's put it a little bit higher. Just really low value just to see the effect of this. So, okay, I can see it breaking a little bit here in these areas. It's kind of breaking. You can see black area some, some place in some places. Uh, maybe here it's breaking. So if you are seeing in your displacement some black areas, especially it will be like dark squares. It means that you need, uh, to raise the, uh, the, the displacement bound. I, I most of the time just put it to one and, and it would, it just works. If I see any artifacts and I raise it a little bit, but, uh, uh, when you have displays that are, are really small or just detail on the surface, it, it won't uh, matter. But if you see any of that, uh, artifacts, just put the displacement bound up and you will fix those. All right. So before we go, I guess, uh, the, the other thing you could do is render this with subsurface, uh, I mean, so sub with subdivisions and might even may, might get a little bit more detail. Uh, again, if you guys, uh, remember, I, I did, uh, 
a video about subdivisions so go and uh, and see that uh, to see how you render with subdivisions i have this tool here that i created just to enable that i have it uh i add this parameters there i might create a tutorial for that later All right, so now this is the version with uh, subdivisions enabled, and you can see there's a lot of detail there. And most of the uh, most of the things that I notice is if I go back and forth, you can see the normals get softened a little bit, which looks a little bit better for this rock. You can see there's some hard edges there that you might or might not want, but uh, some places get better. Like here, you can see if I just look here under my mouse, you can see below my mouse there's some artifacts. And if they go away when you subdivide this, which looks uh, way better. So there you go. Even here, there's some artifacts that go away. Or here. Pretty cool. Over here. So, all right. And you can see subdivisions in Renderman are super fast. All right. One quick note before I uh, finish this. I know there is a displacement transform node. And uh, this should be uh, maybe the way that we should be doing this, centering the, the values that we're doing here. But I tried making this uh, work with the scalar option and it was not giving me anything. Uh, I might not be uh, doing it correctly or uh, it might be a bug or may not be the way to do it. Uh, but yeah, I did try a lot to use this for uh, using this scalar value to, to map it to uh, center the displacement, the, uh, the, the value that we uh, kind of did here, but it didn't work for me. So uh, using the remap, uh, was the way that I made it work and uh, that's it. I just wanted to make you guys uh, know that uh, my of you Some of you might tell me that using the displacement transform is the way to go But I just didn't uh, know how to make it work. So if you know uh, Let me know. All right guys. So there we go We know how to render perfect displacement in renderman without losing any detail at all All right guys, so I hope you uh, learned something from this. Let's keep learning together and I will see you in the next one, alright? Cheers!